Welcome everyone to today's Cirrus Insight Office Hours. We will be covering the Activities Plus functionality of Cirrus in today's session. We're delighted to have each of you here. We want to wish all of you a happy Friday and hope that all of you have some fun plans uh, despite our circumstances for Halloween as well. And with that, we'll um, just get a couple of housekeeping items out of the way before I pass it over to our presenter today. Um, go to the next slide, please. So we are recording today's session. Everyone will get a link to the recording via email roughly 24 to 48 hours after today's live event. I'd also like to note that we welcome and encourage questions throughout today's session. If you'll please take a moment and locate the questions pane in the go to webinar side panel. This is what we will use to monitor those questions, uh, get them answered, and uh, make sure that everyone has an opportunity to ask as many questions as they'd like throughout the session. So again, please do ask questions. We love it. And with that, um, we will kick it off to today's presenter, Jeff, who is going to take us through the Activities Plus. All right. Thanks so much, Amy. So hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jeff. I'm the Director of Product here at Cirrus and Zinbit. Um, so probably a couple of you have been on some of these webinars, so some of this might be more familiar to you. But um, I always like to give a quick intro on myself. Um, I've been with the company since 2014. We were nine people there uh, at that point. I think now we're up to like 75. So it's been uh, it's been a pretty pretty crazy run. Um, certified Salesforce admin. Uh, I started our success team and while working on the product team, then transitioned full time more into product and design. Um, and if you're curious about me, um, I love getting feedback, cooking, Bruce Springsteen, reading. Uh, it's kind of my my deal. Um, all that's to say. If you want to talk about any of those things or the product or anything else, please don't hesitate to email me. Here's my email, it's just geoff at seriousinsight.com. Um, Amy's also happy to talk to anybody. Um, <laughs> volunteer her as well at just agreen at seriousinsight.com. So feel free to email me. We can meet anytime. Um, happy to talk to anybody on the call um, about any questions. So um, it's always great to hear feedback from customers. Yes, absolutely. And yes, feel free to email either of us. If we can't get you the answer, we'll point you in the right direction. So absolutely. So I did want to talk through um, a couple of things from a uh, just a housekeeping standpoint on like the, uh, the merger. So I'm not sure if everyone heard, um, but as of a couple months ago, Cirrus Insight and Zinbit have merged. Um, and we're all pretty excited about this. So you know, we're both kind of in the Salesforce email suite, like, you know, calendar sync, email sync, and Salesforce integration in market. And we think that um, there's a lot of complementary skills to be had by both teams. Um, just if you look at sort of the products and the companies, like Zinbit historically has been more Outlook focused, more enterprise focused, Cirrus Insight uh, a little bit more on the Gmail side and the SMB mid market side. Likewise, Zinbit's, um, a lot of their functionality is really geared towards the admin. When we're serious, uh, we've historically geared towards like the end user, you know, the account executive, the success manager, sales rep. Um, Zinbit has a very streamlined product. Um, Cirrus has more of a robust product. And Zinbit's focused a lot more on calendar automation and Cirrus is like typically more like email automation stuff. Um, so the good news is, um, you know, we're planning to, to to bring the best of both to uh, to, to the respective apps and, and really align on it moving forward. And, and if you're curious about what the merger sort of means for you, um, our main goal over the next, you know, into the near and midterm future is just product experience 101. So, um, you know, we're not necessarily gonna work on anything crazy new other than, you know, the existing functionality that you all know and love, or we're gonna make that more usable more performant, more stable, more enterprise ready, uh, more traceable and more learnable. So a lot of what we're trying to do is just, you know, again, bring the best of both of, uh, of both tools to, and, and sort of the best versions of each feature we have on both tools to, to each service and make sure that they have sort of our PX 101 nailed down. So I think this is all great news for, for every Cirrus customer, every Zimbit customer, and we're pretty excited. Um, you know, just the collaborations, 
been great. We've been doing a few of these webinars now. Amy uh, is coming coming to us from uh, the Zimbit team. Uh, I'm obviously uh, coming from the Cirrus Insight side. So um, we just, yeah, it's been great. Zimbit team's awesome to work with, and we're all we're all really pumped about it. And again, if you have any questions about merger, or if you want to talk, or if you have feedback about where where we should go, again, please email us. Um, you know, one of our roadmap is going to be customer driven. Um, and you know we want uh, we want to hear from you about what you'd like to see from us. So with that in mind, I will launch into. Looks like I got to log in here to my old demo account. Uh, I will log into my environment here and show you Activities Plus. Open up an email, get the app loaded. So Cirrus. Uh, I'll begin sort of with the why. So we, we've heard from many customers that, and, you know, we, we've, um, we've heard from many customers over the years and, and we've, um, you know, asked ourselves like, what, what is the true purpose of, um, you know, saving emails and saving events into Salesforce? So the, what I'll be showing you today is a few of the ways that you can save activities in Salesforce and how that sort of feeds into Activities Plus. So we asked ourselves for a number of years, like what is the true purpose of saving these items in the Salesforce? And you know, when we talked with customers and when we looked at ourselves, a lot of people expressed that it was difficult to actually really understand the narrative um, of what your of what the relationship has been between company and customer. So our feature Activities Plus is our sort of version one of attempting to solve that. Um, the rough thesis being that you know we save a lot of emails and customers use our app to save a lot of emails into Salesforce and a lot of events into Salesforce, and a lot of that has value from like a reportive standpoint. Like it's you know you can go build an activity report or see how many people are sending this emails or see stuff in aggregate. But a lot of like what the day to day of what you're trying to do on an account or on a contact or on an opportunity is just figure out what the heck is happening. Like where are you at now? And what's sort of the story of this account? You know, this could be uh, a success manager taking over from another success manager, a salesperson taking over from another salesperson, a salesperson like asking their boss for advice about the deal, or a salesperson like asking, you know, a, a, a solutions engineer to, to, you know, come architect something for the deal. Um, it could be any number of things. So what we're trying to do is build this Activities Plus feature. Um, to better show that. So Activities Plus is a feature that turns the activity history in Salesforce and open activities into more of a readable ledger. So this is gonna be a pretty um, short demo itself as far as what the feature is. It's kind of focused a, a lot around a, a couple of key things. So the one thing would be, you know, we want to make it easier to see what uh, emails you've saved in the Salesforce. So like when you look at a Salesforce record, if I, go to this actual activity record. The way all apps like Cirrus and Zenbit and like everyone do like save it in the Salesforce is, you know, you have, it saves in the subject, the due date, everything that related to all that good stuff. Um, and it saves it typically into a comment section on the task or the email message out there like this. And it's, you know, it's, it's good, but it's not formatted. It's not rich text. Um, there's not a lot of um, like, there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of like ease of use um, for reading this stuff. Like certainly, if you're trying to make this easier to read, you don't need to include stuff like body or subject or from or recipients. You just kind of make it look like that a little bit better. And you know, it's even rough if you go to like that opportunity or that contact in Salesforce. And I know I'm on classic and lightning. I don't think it's actually much better. Where if you're looking at the activity history, you know, I'm sure many of you have this issue, but like. So there's six emails here, like which of these emails are important? Which of these emails, um, you know, what do these emails say? Like in order to do that, you either have to hit this view all button in Salesforce, which gives you the whole thing. And it's still not very easy to read and you know, not very legible. Or you have to like go into each email, click into it, go back. And then, you know, there's often like threading issues like this. So our thought was, let's make that a little bit better. And so as core, that's what we're trying to do with Activities Plus is, when we save an email into the sidebar, or into, I'm sorry, into Salesforce, uh, we want to display what you have saved into Salesforce in an easier to use way, all your emails, calls, and meetings. 
So I can click on an email and I can see, um, you know, more easily, it's from Jack Swider. Uh, he sent it to me. Uh, he, this is what it was about. I can also, you know, if there's like a thread of emails, I can click on view thread and that'll highlight like the ones associated with that thread. So a lot of the times, um, you know, uh, you'll be able to see like, you'll actually be able to sort of follow the, the history or the chain of the conversation if it's saved in. And you can also see, you know, the calls easier, like that there was a call in August, even some aggregation, like, you know, if I minimize this stuff, that there even was five emails in October, September, August, May, you know, this type of stuff is useful in, in seeing like, well, what is even our cadence with this contact or with this account? Like, when's the last time we even talked to this person? So we're trying to simplify and better that user experience, which is one of the reasons we wanted to do this. So, you know, if I go to view more here, you can see like this thread would be a thread of, I saved this email in a bunch of times, but this would be an example of like something where I can click on it and kind of follow along the conversation to uh, to do it. So at its core, we're trying to make the activity history in open activities more readable in Salesforce, or I'm sorry, in, in Cirrus and site so that you can kind of have a better sense of it. So if you get an email from Jack Swader, you can kind of quickly go over to Activities Plus and just figure out what the heck's happened. So that's the main feature. The other feature um, that we offer here is uh, search. So another issue with sort of the, the typical Salesforce uh, activity history uh, or, uh, you know, look, activity history or even looking at the activities is if you want to know, like, where's the email here or where's the call with Jack Swagger? I'm even go to his because there's, there's more in here. You know, if I go to this list, like which is which is the important one and which is the one where we talked about demoing it or which is the one where, um, you know, we talked about um, doing a training. Like, sure, I can see if it's in the subject line, I can see it here. But if it's not, then, you know, there might be a lot of good content in these emails that, you know, I, again, I either have to click into all of them or I have to like, you know, do something kind of weird to, to get it. So instead, what we've added is the ability to search through a particular uh, contact or account or opportunities, uh, activities, uh, activities by just, you, know, you can type in search here. And this is something that's kind of new to Salesforce. You can search through this specific records opportunities. So, you know, I can see if I search for demo, well, here's an email where we talked about the demo. Uh, looks like this is an email uh, where we talked about the demo and Here's a meeting that we had with the demo. Here's a meeting invitation that went out. All this stuff, um, you know, is pertaining to some type of demo we've given in the past. So just at its core, you know, most people like philosophically when they're using a, when you're using like computer or when you're in the browser, like you're just used to Googling things. Like, you know, you open up a new tab and you just type in something into Google. So we wanted to facilitate that search because that's a lot of how, how a lot of people get information. Like you're not necessarily going to remember which conversation you talked about the demo with, but you do know, like if I'm a if I'm a success manager taking over this account, I just might want to search up demo, or I might want to search contract, or whatever else, and find that email, or see if we have something with, with like that um, attachment in there, so I can find the contract. So that's mainly it. You can also expand it here, and there's a little tour as well as a knowledge base article if you want to get like a little walkthrough of this stuff. And that's really the core. So how that integrates with the rest of the app, if I save this email into Salesforce, what we've added is if you hit click add, uh, you'll see this little red badge here and you click over to it. And that's basically just indicating that there's something new on that activities uh, plus tab since you last uh, looked at it. So if you're talking with someone uh, and someone else has saved some emails into Salesforce and you go back and like, let's say now you will Jack and you notice two or three new things, that means, you know, someone has, has, has basically emailed them or added two or three new activities onto this record um, since you've last uh, talked to them. So just even that, like, you know, if, if I'm a success manager and, you know, my salesperson is reaching out to an account or, you know, someone else is reaching out or they had a support issue that they emailed or, or whatnot, uh, it's even just good to know that stuff. So again, we're trying to just surface and make better use out of one of the core features, which is just you know adding emails, adding calls, adding uh, meetings uh, to Salesforce. 
So that's really it at its core. Long term, if you're looking at a, if you're wondering about a roadmap for this, um, a couple of the roadmap items that we want to do for this are, um, are as an example, uh, adding uh, like automatic tagging to these or uh, facilitating some other type of like analysis on this. So what we'd like to do is just tag these automatically based off of relevant stuff. So that's something that we'll be looking at into the future that we're currently looking at now, looking at putting directly into the app in the future, which is, you know, if this is buying a thousand widgets, then we might tag this with like a sales tag or, you know, a support tag or a success tag or, you know, a product A tag or a, you know, we might pop up a little score here that says like, this is an angry email or some type of, you know, basically doing some other type of process or sentiment analysis and content analysis on these emails. And we can't really do that too easy, you know, in the actual Salesforce activity history itself. So hence, that's another reason where we, we think there's a, like another level of activity management that we can we can help our customers get to um, in conversation analysis that, that we want to support. So if you're wondering about roadmap, that'll certainly be one of the roadmap areas that we're looking at. Now, as far as how you feed uh, into this, uh, the main things that you do uh, again, if you add emails to Salesforce, that's how you, that's what you'll get in there, uh, or that's how you can add an email into that, into that ledger. Uh, if you have email sync on, certainly. Uh, also, if you have calendar sync on, events will get in there. Um, and the last one would be logging calls. So if you hit the log call button in the sidebar, and I say, uh, say, you know, call Jack about um, contract. I have no idea what types of validation rules I have set up for this dev org, so hopefully this works. Okay, cool. Button two. Call Jack about a contract November 2nd. So if I go back to Jack Slater, it should pop it up in the activities here. This being a demo, I'm going to doubt that it works. Oh, there we go. So, you know, call Jack about a contract, and I can see that it's, uh, it's you know, that that's sort of the next thing that's uh, that's going to happen there. All right. So I think that, you know we were planning on this being a, a shorter webinar, um, and I'd like to take some 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 questions now um, and spend some time on that. So you know, let me take a look at the questions here. Yeah, we do have a few questions and. Um... Just want to, you know, also offer up to those that are attending today, since we do have a little bit of extra time in today's session. If you have other questions for Jeff that don't relate to Activities Plus, we encourage those questions as well. This time is for you, and uh, so we want to make sure that if there are interlinking, lingering questions that you may have, that we get those addressed for you. So encourage that as well. So it looks like we have a question that says, it seems that it can save the email associated with the contact, but it's not associating it with the opportunity or nor can it find it even though it's there in Salesforce, what's happening? Um, you know, I'm not sure I understand the question there. Um, that if you wanna maybe, if you wanna shoot me an email, throw me an email again up on there. I might need to, to dig into that. I'm not sure that I'm understanding that in the context of Activities Plus. So maybe uh, just shoot me an email on that one and we can, uh, we can dig into it on a call or over email. I have a question. Uh, looks like there's one that says, uh, what is your general roadmap for activity logging uh, and, and how do you plan to improve it? That's a good question. So um, the question being around activity logging. So classically, um, you know, we've, we've offered a manual way and an automatic way to save these uh, items in the Salesforce. So the manual way to add emails in the Salesforce would be you're on an email, you open up an email, you hit click add, or, you know, you add some other type of information to it, save it in the Salesforce, and that gets it there. The automatic way of doing that would be, you know, you go into your settings and you go to email, you go on the email sync, and you turn on email sync, and that will just run in the background and sync your emails automatically. Likewise, on the calendar side, the two options were, if I create an event here, there's a Serious Insight tab that I can manually add this event to Salesforce as I'm creating it. So I can you know, 
meet with Jack, add Jack Sawyer, and I can, you know, relate it to an opportunity or whatever else and fill out the information. That's the manual way. And then the automatic way would be, again, you go to your settings, you go to calendar sync, and you can enable calendar sync, color coded calendar sync, you know, various options for that. And that's sort of the more automatic way of doing it. Um, so that's what we have now. And there's certain rules that you can set up. Like if you go to our Cirrus Insight dashboard, there are various rules that you can uh, set up relating to email sync and calendar sync. A lot of our roadmap on activity logging for sync and how we're getting in, uh, getting stuff in there um, is going to be probably related more towards sync. And the, the big reason for that is, you know, if you think fundamentally about activity logging, um, I'm sure, you know, if we have, it looks like uh, based on who I see on the call, we have a fair amount of admins. I know a lot of admins, um, you know, can sometimes, let's be honest, we, we can struggle a bit getting um, you know, full buy-in on activity logging in the org. And a lot of that is because, it, it, you know, activity logging to some extent doesn't directly pertain to like making a sale a lot of the time. You know, it's, it's useful in sort of looking at it in aggregate or it's useful in, you know, maybe the next person down the line who touches that account. But for the person who's just, uh, you know, the salesperson who's just uh, working the deal and trying to make that sale by the end of the month, like, you know, sometimes they can feel that activity logging might either slow them down or it's not needed or, you know, whatever else. So we found a lot of success in um, a lot of the uh, rules that we that we offer around sync, both on the Cirrus and Zinbit side. So um, we think that probably like, you know, long-term, Activity logging should be something that we will hopefully be able to automate as much as possible. You know, the the manual way, the manual, the reasons that people still manually log emails is, you know, they don't want every email going into Salesforce, or they only want to relate things granularly to specific opportunities. And there's probably, you know, we we're spending uh, some time researching like how much even in those use cases can we can we help with automation there because. You know, again, like saving an email to Salesforce doesn't 100% translate into uh, directly helping you close that deal. But we really want to help our, our users close deals and make more money and, you know, save time out of their day. So we're focused a lot on like adding sync options and sync rules and doing more stuff relating to, um, you know, like which emails we should save and which events we should save. So if we can get to the point where we're just sort of automatically saving in things and tagging them with relevant information and analyzing them and sorting them and organizing them. Um, that's, we think that's going to be a uh, sort of a, a better path than, you know, focusing probably more on like the manual. There's still going to be a use case and we're still for sure going to support people manually wanting to click this add a Salesforce here or there. But um, we think for most of our customers, we'll be able to support them with um, sort of smarter sync rules. So that's a lot of what we're working on is like, how do we, get smarter with our sync so that the users don't even have to don't even have to click at the Salesforce. Jeff, we have a few other questions um, sure. come up. So one is related to email templates with Cirrus and uh, more specifically the ability to embed an image that does not require a URL. Um, are there any plans for that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so at the moment, to give context for, for other folks on the call, if you go to the templates button in Cirrus Insight and you are creating a template, so one of the nice things we offer is uh, this new template button. So if you um, go into Salesforce and are managing your templates in Salesforce, it can be kind of rough. Salesforce, especially classic templates, aren't aren't the easiest thing to use. You know, you kind of have to, if you want to add an image in there, you kind of have to know a little bit of HTML, which um, is, is, is a bit of a hassle. What Cirrus does, did is we created our own template editor for Salesforce, where I can hit new template and go ahead and uh, create this template. So if I want to do like onboarding email number two in the subject, I can say like, hey, and then I can put in like a, hey, contact, First name, check out this lovely graphic saying how cool 
we are from Gartner. And then I can drop in an image. Now, the issue at the moment um, for some of our customers is that this, in, this has to be a hosted image. So, um, you know, you'd have to put that on Dropbox or put on Imager or put on Google Drive or OneDrive or any of that. And there are ways of doing that. Like it, but a lot of those, um, a lot of those sites and services make it, uh, frankly, kind of harder than it needs to be. Um, so what you can do on like Google is, you know, if you're on Google Drive and you want to, let me just take a quick little screenshot of like the logo. You know, if I do that and then I try and upload it here, it looks like I already have a logo. So I'll just use this CI logo transparent. Um, if I do a get link here, you know, this is not going to send me to the, sort of the raw link. If I copy this and, you know, then go to this, it's going to show me to to this thing, which is not the raw link. So if you put like this link in, in the template, it's not going to work. So the issue is, um, you know, you need to find like the actual raw link for this, which typically um, a lot of the time, like, you know, there's there's a way to do it, like raw image file. I can't even remember off the top of my head how to do it for Google Drive, but, um, and see, this is actually talking about the format, but um, you'll just need to find the way to actually get to that direct image link, which will typically end with like a .png or .jpeg or whatever. So um, at the moment, yeah, we don't have a way of like storing images on our servers or storing images wherever. So uh, some of that is due to like Salesforce limitations with classic templates. Um, you know, there's no storage in Salesforce, so we can't offer that or else we'd have to like have some kind of weird situation where it's like most of the template lives in Salesforce, but we're pointing to an image that's hosted on our servers. Um, having said that, you can do that with lightning templates now. So when we, and as we're, we're planning on developing support for lightning templates, so as we start to support those, uh, we will add support for images. Um, in the long term, we'll, you know, I think we'll, we'll try and find a way to make it just easier to the user, because I'm sure none of you will care whether it's stored here or there or whatever else, but you, know, you just want it to be easy to use. So that's a very long-winded explanation to, there's some technical limitations when we originally developed this feature, and we're gonna try and uh, accommodate that moving forward, but that's a great question. We do have another question, Jeff here from um, a user that, uh, it doesn't have it doesn't pertain to activities plus but um they're a previous user of and, and i'm not exactly sure if this is the acronym for what you're referring to but y-a-m-m and you're able to create email campaigns where the system will pull email addresses and other information and send it directly to an excel sheet is there a way that cirrus can do that yeah absolutely so yeah why am um uh, is a, a former extension. I think it's a former extension. Uh, it stands for yet another mail merge. It's a great name. I was loving the name. Um, but it's basically, it was an extension that was pretty much just for sending bulk emails out of Gmail. So you can do that. So our campaign button in Cirrus, if you click on campaign, um, this is how you send a mass email in Cirrus. So I would name this campaign like test former yam user. Let's say that. Um, so the options you have, actually Cirrus is a bit more robust um, in terms of our options for creating your lists. Because you can build from report in Salesforce, you can build from a list view. So if I want to do like all my contacts, um, you know, you can just check the boxes of anybody you want to send it to. You can do a CSV upload. So this is where your Excel sheet, you just have to save it as a CSV and then make sure that the columns are, are correct. And then you would do a manual entry. Uh, you could also do like jsmith at acme.com, uh, Jane Douglas at acme.com, Steve Davis at acme.com. So you can do it a couple different ways. So I'm just going to do the, the list view and select a couple contacts. And then now you would choose your template and you would hit. So you choose your template. In this case, you can preview it here. So this is going to be all my templates coming in from Salesforce. So I'm going to choose this one, this new customer email. And this is what the template's going to look like. And when I hit continue, what that's going to do is actually it's going to go into Gmail and it's going to create a label in Gmail. And uh, 
basically, uh, we're going to create a label in Gmail and it's going to create all those uh, emails as individual graphs. And then once these are created, you'll be able to add them to all the Salesforce, track them, uh, send later or send them later if you want, put a follow-up reminder on them as well as, uh, as well as track it. So you can send it all and uh, that's how you would do that. So a little bit more robust than yet another mail merge, but yeah, you can for sure send mass emails with Sarah, so it's pretty easy to do. So someone had a question around uh, what are the icons to the left of Cirrus inside it, like Slack, Calendar, how do they get there? So this isn't even necessarily a Cirrus question, but just as like a general Gmail tip. So Gmail has a new way of doing add-ins called Gmail add-ins. Um, so you can turn these on, uh, Gmail add-ons, I should say. They're Microsoft add-ins. Gmail, of course, we call them add-ons because, you know, just to make my job a little bit more difficult and talking about this stuff on webinars with a bunch of people. Um, but it's it's a Gmail add-on. So uh, classically in, in into the future, the way like Cirrus and Zenbit have worked and most extensions have been via Chrome extensions or Firefox extensions. Like you install Cirrus into your actual browser as opposed to your Gmail. Um, now what Gmail offers is another way of adding on to the Gmail experience called Gmail add-ons where you know they have a couple of default ones like but they're basically sidebars a lot like what gmail is for for cirrus um so you can open up like your calendar you can ask us like google keep here uh google tasks um all this stuff you can sort of pop up as a sidebar here and even like there are third-party ones like slack as an example has a sidebar here um where if you it's, theirs is pretty simple if you have it connected when you open up an email you can just like send this email to Slack and like just it's basically like a copy and paste to Slack um, that does it automatically to like a specific channel. So it's pretty cool. Um, the other benefit of these, um, so there's some downsides to this. So we haven't made Cirrus a, a Gmail add-on because um, it limits a lot of the stuff that 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 we can do, um, and it would result in probably we, we think a net worse user experience for our users. Um, so we're probably going to keep with the with being an extension. Having said that, on the Zimbit side with our Zimbit product, we have built a Gmail add-on to test it. Um, and so with our Zimbit product, we are going to support that. It's going to be like a, a, a more stripped down version of the Cirrus and uh, Zimbit sidebars. Um, but we're, we're kind of curious to see where, where Gmail takes it and how to support it. Because one neat thing you can do is actually access these from the Gmail mobile app. Um, and we know a lot of our users would prefer to use Gmail mobile app rather than like our mobile email app, which is, you know, a mobile email inbox. So we'll be taking a look at that and, and keeping an eye on, on how that how that develops. Um, that's the way our, our Microsoft uh, app works is that it does it's done through the Office add and functionality. Um, so we're going to take a look at it and, you know, we will. Uh, we'll see how we can uh, how we can work with it. But yeah, they have a bunch of you click this little plus button here. Um, there's a bunch of these different add-ons. You can get like a Zoom one, you get like a Trello one, uh, Fish Alarm, Smartsheet, DocuSign, uh, Zapier, Dropbox. There's a fair amount uh, in there. So I think I don't see any other questions unless I'm missing some, Amy. Do you see any? No, I think you covered um, most of them. And uh, oh, it looks like we did have one or more. So let's see here. Um, email tracking uh, counts the times that the email is opened by myself. Is it possible to set it in a way so this does not happen? It should. So if you, um, I'm trying to remember, I think there's a setting in Google that is like, I think like 90% of people or 95% of people have that you might be not having. So. What I would do is go to our website, seriousinsight.com, click this little button in the bottom right with the friendly faces, and uh, just just ping them. I'm not sure what the, we should be able to fix that. Um, typically there's just like a toggle in Gmail that you have to select, but I can't remember that off the top of my head. Um, but good question. But yeah, that's a good, I mean, anytime you need any help with Sirius, we have a really good chat team. Um, these are all real people in the bottom right. 
uh, that work on our chat team. And they're all really smart. So you just click on that anytime you need and uh, and, and talk to them. But they should be able to help you out right now. Thanks everybody for the great questions. Um, if anybody has any other questions, we'll keep the line open here for a few more minutes. Um, and again, happy to answer any questions, open questions that you have. This time is for you guys. So It looks like that might be all the questions that we have for today, Jeff. So thank you for taking us through this. And thank you to everyone who attended today's session. As noted earlier, the session has been recorded and we will make sure that everyone gets a link to that. And as Jeff mentioned, uh, our email addresses are always open to all of you. Please feel free to contact us if you have a question that you want to take offline or if you have anything else that you're wondering about that you'd like to further investigate, we're happy to help. Jeff just put the screen back up there so everybody has those email addresses. And uh, to his point as well, always encourage you to reach out to our live chat support also. If you have specific questions, they are the fastest, easiest way to get the answers. So um, please feel free to do that. Our next office hour session will be coming up on November, I believe it's Friday the 16th and, um, uh, excuse me, the 13th, Friday the 13th. We'll look forward to having everyone else at that session as well. And we'll be sending out some emails to let you know on the topics that we'll be covering. So thanks again. And if you do have ideas for topics, uh, please send those our way as well. Appreciate the time. You guys have a great day.